This is the Electronic Church of God of Arizona and the Lord's Care Ministry. Today is April 26th, preparation day for the Sabbath. It happens to be on your calendar at Friday. <clears throat> preparation day for the Lord's Sabbath, which always falls on the seventh day of the week. Some people in Europe and other places have changed Sunday as the seventh day of the week so that they can, in their own minds, say, well, we're following the Bible. It doesn't do that. If they should take the proper computer programs, they can go all the way back in time. And you see that the week never changed. The day changed one time, it was extended and then brought back. But the weekday never changed. So this is the sixth work day of the week, preparation day for the Lord's Sabbath. Well, brethren, with that, let's get right on over into the Lord's Care Ministry. Knowledge gives light for your daily walk, day 116 of the year 2013. Brethren, again, I suggest you write the chapter and verses down on a pad and paper so that you can go back and study the whole context at your own leisure. Read before the verse, read after the verse. Use the 5W system to find out the who what, where, when, and why this particular chapter and verse was written into your Bible. That way, by the end of our year here, you pretty well covered most of the ideas of the Bible that you need to have to get a good foundation. You can use the pause button below this video, brother, to start and stop this little study so you can pick up your own Bible, read chapter and verse right along with us. Okay, let's get right into knowledge gives light for your daily walk. We're going to start reading in that wonderful book, Song of Solomon, chapter 2 and verse 6. His left hand is under my head, and his right hand doeth embrace me. People think this is Solomon that they're talking about. But by reading the who, what, where, when, and why, you find that's not the case. In Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 27, underneath are the everlasting arms. In Matthew chapter 14, verse 30 through 32, when Peter saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and was beginning to sink. And he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore did thou doubt? What happened here? Peter had his eyes on the Lord and he could walk on water. But when you take your eyes off the Lord, onto something else, you will sink. In Psalms chapter 37, verse 23 through 24, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he is delighting in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord is upholding men with his hand. In Deuteronomy chapter 33 and verse 12, the beloved of the Lord shall dwell in safety by him, and the Lord shall cover him all the day long, and he shall dwell between his shoulders. In 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 7, casting all your care upon him, that's casting it upon the Lord, for he is caring for you. In Zechariah chapter 2 and verse 8, 
He that is touching you is touching the apple of his eye. John chapter 10, verse 28 through 29. They shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them to me, is greater than all. Now back to that book of Song of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 10. He, well, who is she that is looking forth as the morning fair, as the moon, clear as the sun, and terrible as the army with banners? In Acts chapter 20 and verse 28, the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 25 through 27. Christ loved the church. I mean, the church, does he mean a building? A brick and mortar building? No. The church is his people. And if you are following Christ, you are part of that church. If you're taking that broad path, you're not of that church, but of the church of Satan. Back to Ephesians 5, verse 25 through 27. Christ loved the church, and he gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such things, but that it should be holy and without blemish. In Revelation chapter 12 and verse 1, there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun. In Revelation chapter 19 and verse 7 through 8, the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready, and to her it was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the Satan of the saints. Brethren, when he says that she made herself ready, what's he talking about? He's talking about the church, that you and I being made ready, for we are the church. Now in Romans chapter 3 and verse 22, the righteousness of God was by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and of all them that believe. In John chapter 17 and verse 22, the glory which thou givest me, I has given them. Oh, send out your light, or send out your truth, and your truth, and let them lead me, and bring me at last to my Father's house in peace. Knowledge is the light, or the knowledge that comes from God, not from the tradition of men. What the world needs is Jesus. John chapter 8, and verse 12. I am the light, or I am the knowledge of the world. He that is following me shall not work in ignorance or darkness, but shall have the knowledge of life. Brethren, in God's word only do we trust. Never in the tradition of men. Beware of the tradition of men that make void the word of God. Don't make void the word of God. Prepare yourself today, preparation day, for the Lord's Sabbath. Congregate as he commands throughout his word for his people. He's not talking about somebody else, but for his people. And if you are a follower of Christ, it says, if you love me, keep my commandments. I can go to Revelation and show you a couple other places. For the followers of Christ will be the saints and come to the Lord. Brethren, get down on your knees and repent from following the broad path that leads to destruction. 
Stop following the tradition of men. Ask the Father and the Son to bring their spirit within you. Abode with their spirit so that you will have the knowledge and the understanding of that love letter he has sent to you. And that love letter is your own Bible. Well, brethren, with that, we're going to close for today. You all have a great and wonderful day. I know I will. God willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.